Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. I am very excited because today I am finally showing you the vinyl in the vinyl pad. This is the collection as it is. Um, this was a long time in the planning, probably five years. And I started building this in, I wanna say November of 2021. And this was roughly complete uh, probably in February of 2022. I definitely had a lot of help building this. This was not cheap because the price of plywood right now is insane, uh, but I'm so very happy to have this finished. And uh, those of you on Patreon have seen this progress, but for the rest of you, I, I wanted to show you the nearly finished product. Uh, and do a whole room tour so you can kind of see how all of this ties together. Now, a little story on these. I took an existing design, but I felt the bottom could use more storage. So that's what this is. It's a modified version of, of her design. Originally, I wanted these bottom sections to be on uh, casters. Uh, then my buddy said, well, why don't we put them on a drawers? But uh, heavy duty... Uh, <laughs> Uh, drawer slides uh, would have added another $500 to this cost. And I just was like, no, I mean, if, if yeah, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't worth it in the end uh, because the bottom shelf are stuff that I don't regularly pull out. Upper shelf here, upper row here, this is the more heavy hitters. Records I have a lot of uh, one particular band or artist. Um, so yeah, I wanted this to be showcased. Like I wanted you to be like, oh, do you have any Bob Dylan? Yeah, I got Bob Dylan right here. And I got Daft Punk, Father John Misty, Genesis, Hall & Oates, Led Zeppelin, King Gizzard, King Crimson, that sort of a thing. Like the heavy hitters, soundtracks are over there as well as Vaporwave, Synthwave. And then down below are like genre specific. So ska and reggae, hip hop, 80s new wave, 80s uh, pop rock, jazz funk, funk. Uh, <laughs> so on and so forth, exotica, stuff like that. Um, but what happened was I have this odd post that sort of interrupts this room and you have to contend with 12 inch records, right? They're only, you can only space them so much. And so it was a whole design thing. I use SketchUp to kind of mock it out. Uh, this turned out to be the best use of the space. It gives me enough room to walk behind the bar, gives you enough room to enter in the pad, go to the couch, that sort of a thing. The only bummer about it is this dead space back here, which I will eventually get a platform, basically another sheet of plywood square piece, and but have it be removable like a hatch. And then I'll, I'll take one of these um, Apple Records crates and that will be like the new arrivals and to and the uh, you know to be filed section. So if you pull if you're a guest here and you pull out a record, don't know where it goes, you can just put it in that pile. Uh, and then down below will be like storage for like tripods and different things. Uh, these this upper shelf is sort of the rare records as well as records that mean a lot to me. And then there's some records like I don't know how to where to put them, like Dreamin' Wild, like where, where I don't know where those go. Uh, I might do a more in-depth uh, going through every record on my Patreon, but I just want to give you guys an overview. This was kind of a fun thing because I wanted, uh, you know, this comes out a certain depth from the wall, and I knew I wanted these to meet in the corner, but then I had to contend with that post. And so, actually, these two are a little are a little skinnier than that one. Even though they look the same, it's actually a little skinnier so I could fit this uh, seven inch shelf. And then I had this weird sort of space. So I used uh, that for display of these Elvis decanters. Now on my other channel, Mixing with the Geek, I go in depth on the meaning behind these, but I just thought this was a cool way to display these pretty meaningful uh, decanters, which actually most of them still have the booze <laughs> inside. So, um, and the other thing I was doing is these custom uh, record, what do they call them? Record divider cards here. I got these from uh, Bags Unlimited and then I used lettering uh, to put these on. So I've hand lettered all of these because I just wasn't satisfied with what was out there. And I knew I wanted not only band names, but I also wanted genres, that sort of a thing. So I'm still in the process of that down below. I, I basically ran out of specific letters so I couldn't go any, go any further. Uh, on replacing all the white cards that you see down below, um, like this one for, for disco funk, right? This is what I used for a long time. These came out of Big Al's record barn. 
as you can see, he had his own <laughs> genres. But yeah, so I had disco funk on here. So eventually I'll, I'll, I'll replace it with the black card. And eventually I'll do the same thing for these uh, seven inches. But for some reason, Bags Unlimited doesn't make divider cards in black with tabs in the seven inch side. Because uh, I wanted tabs too, because some of these get real close together as you can see here and then down below, it gets really hard to see. And the other unfortunate thing about going down here is this, trying to get under here, your head definitely hits this. So um, it's not the most ideal at by far, this sort of setup, but I can't tell you the joy I get just from flipping through the records as opposed to going this way in a record shelf. Uh, the whole idea was I wanted to invite people who come here, guests, musicians, artists, my friends, to come and actually encourage them sublim subliminally. I can't say that word. I wanted to encourage them by having everything facing towards them so that they actually will peruse like in a record store. And I, I didn't necessarily intend this to look like a record store, but that's, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? That's what it looks like. Getting this finish took a long time to get it right. I actually used two different finishes. I initially did like a an orange pass and then I did it with a brown pass. And I went over all that in, my, in a Patreon video. It was, it was a process and my buddy Phil from uh, my band, my old band, King Cousins, he helped out a ton and, and a couple of his friends also helped me. And But he's up in Santa Cruz so I had to like drive up there to get a lot of this done. And I think this took about eight sheets of plywood and they're about $115 each or something. It was crazy how much uh, the plywood was. And then did a, drilled a lot of pocket holes to get put these things together, but um, it's done and I am love it. I love this so much. The other day I was taping an episode and it was so much fun to actually dig through the records to find the records I wanted to display as opposed to in the past, I would have to like search for records in one spot in the house and then on the ground in another spot and then lug them in here and then package them up and bring them back into the house. Now it's amazing just to have them all here. So very cool. So that's kind of where it is now. Um, I would say 90% done the vinyl pad. Uh, I just got to do some baseboards, some trim around the door. I have an idea for the ceiling on the other half of the ceiling. This ceiling is all AstroTurf. That was a pain in the butt to make that work. Uh, the bar is pretty much done. I got to do a little foot rest, but by and large, I mean, it, it is a room now. It feels amazing to be in here. Feels like a real space. Not that it wasn't before, but it was incomplete for many, many years. It's like half done. And now it's like, I can't describe it. It is, uh, it's like a dream come true. It is, so years of hard work, lots of ideas thrown around and, and to finally get to this point is pretty incredible because I've never had, I've never had this. I've never had a space for my records. I've always just kind of like, well, they can go here for now or I'll put them here for now or I got to store them away for now. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. The other big thing I wanted to talk about real quick is the fact that I'm not going to be able to fit my whole collection in here because I had like at the time, I think 2,700 LPs and this could maybe fit 17, 1800 LPs. So I was like, oh no, man. On top of doing all of this, I had to go through pretty much every record and like Marie Kondo it. Like, does this spark joy or am I going to talk about it? And so I, I, I let go of probably six to 700 albums, about half of those I am going to trade and or sell to some record stores around here. But the other half, unfortunately, I, I realized are, were in terrible shape. And, and part of that was when I started collecting uh, back in high school, I just bought records and I didn't really look at the condition. I was just like, oh, cool. This looks like an awesome record. I'll hang on to it. But then as I was going through every record, pulling, pulling the vinyl out, checking for, you know, scuffs, mainly just scratches. I mean, dirt I wasn't so concerned about, but man, sometimes it'd be like a nice deep gouge across one or two tracks. And it's like, I can handle a pop every once in a while, but if it's the a pop in the same spot every rotation, it's not listenable for me. I'm at this point where, you know, space is now limited. Space was always limited, but now it really is limited. Like this is where records live. Other than my box sets, which live in my office, uh, these live here and only here. <laughs> 
Uh, apart from my wife's records, she has all the Prince records and the Paul Abdul, Janet Jackson. Those records all live with in, in, in her, her record listening room, which we are building currently, but she has about 100. But the rest all live in here. Yeah, I'm just so very excited to have this done and complete. Uh, if you are interested in watching more of those behind the scenes videos of how this was all completed, head over to my Patreon page. There is a link down below. Uh, other than that, I want to thank you all so much for watching, for continuing to support the channel over these years, and for uh, being patient while I put all this together. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think with a comment down below. Let me know your collector story, if, if you've had to do something similar, or what your preferred method of storing your records are. Until then, I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side.